So the Red Dead Redemption 2 website was updated once more with a new section called Wildlife less than 24 hours ago. There is some very interesting stuff in there, a lot of mechanics and features we didn't know about as well as about 8 or so brand new screenshots to analyze in full detail. The post itself tackles the subject of wildlife, hunting and fishing and finally horses as well. So I made a video a couple of days ago explaining horses and it seems we have a few more clarifications. So without wasting any more time, I'll dive right into this, starting with the wildlife itself in Red Dead Redemption 2. And it was confirmed that there are close to 200 species of animals, birds and fish in the game, way beyond any of the previous Rockstar games. Well, video game up until now, all of these have of course their own behaviors, which you'll see in just a moment, and respond to their environments in a very unique way. A few examples of this were given and it's just insane how much detail Rockstar Games have put into this game. So deer for example, bison and prog horns traverse the plains in large herds, scavengers quickly sniff out carrions, salmon leap upstream just like in real life, wolves attack in packs surrounding their prey, geese fly in fixed formations, possums play dead and rodents scamper into three hollows. Of course, we also have grizzly bears bluff charging when threatened and birds of prey soaring on thermals. So pretty cool stuff. They all form part of a complex ecosystem and must continuously fight for their place on the food chain. Later on, we see a few screenshots of what's most probably the in-game catalog with animals that you can keep as you discover them. If you didn't know, there is like a sort of cataloging wildlife in Red Dead Redemption 2 and more Morgan can do that and you can see its description, its stats and all of that. This is most useful with the breeds of horses as you can keep like this catalog of horse breeds as well. So we have like a few screenshots of the California ball eye coyote, we have the white tail buck which is just like a deer species, we have a couple of birds of prey like the turkey vulture as well as the bald eagle, the American alligator which is also part of the gameplay preview we saw like a month ago, the Tennessee Walker, which is just one of the 19 or 20 breeds of horses that exist in this game. And later on you'll also see like the Morgan Horse, not sure if it has anything to do with the protagonist, but it's just one of those beautiful brown horses you can get in this game. And you're gonna see quite a little bit of horse play in today's video. Down towards the end you also see the Mighty Grizzly, which was also shown in the trailers and the gameplay video itself. And of course the Lake Sturgeon, just one of the species of fish you'll be able to catch and then of course the banded gila monster or whatever this lizard is because there are a lot of lizards in this game as well and as you know there is a desert area so these are just a few of the species existing in the game moving over to hunting and fishing these are essential skills for survival in the wilderness providing food materials and a source of income there's a huge variety of fish found in rivers lakes and streams and it looks like selecting the right type of bait is also a whole game in itself. You'll have to prepare in advance, not just for hunting but for fishing as well. Later on we find more info on how tracking and hunting animals is done. Tracking an animal takes focus and patience and you'll have to move carefully or you'll alert your prey. One thing that was confirmed by one of the gameplay previews, I believe by IGN or Polygon, is that the weapons and the shot placements will definitely affect the quality of the meat and pelt, which in turn will also affect its price at the market. So if you choose to kill a bird for example with a shotgun or like any bigger bullet, it will definitely ruin it and it will become almost worthless in the process. This means that you'll pretty much have to rely a little bit more on your bow and arrow and this will not ruin the animal corpses as much as gunfire does. So if you want to hunt something and kill it clean off and have everything and it's still preserved then probably this is going to be the preferred method and of course it's also mentioned in one of these sections. After a successful hunt you can either skin and butcher the animal on the spot or take it with you as whole. Leaving it out in the open for too long will make scavengers come looking and there are plenty of those in the game. Moreover skins, parts, meats and entire carcasses can all be loaded onto the horse to be sold to the butchers in town, taken back to the camp for 
or the stew pot or craft it into clothing and other items and we already know that there are definitely a lot of places where you can craft clothing pieces and there are possibly hundreds of pieces and you know different styles that you can craft in the next screenshot for example you can see a butcher shop as well as Morgan carrying an entire alligator carcass on the horseback stuff like meat and animal parts can be both sold and bought at the butchers or general stores but if you want to increase that standing with your own camp with the vendor Lin gang you can pretty much bring them over there as well as it definitely needs quite a lot of resources to survive animal hides are also important for crafting clothing and accessories as I've said and one of the screenshots down over there perfectly shows a hat which seems to have ornaments of some animal parts and if you look at all of these screenshots as a matter of fact you will see Morgan at various points in time wearing different types of hats all made from different types of animals a very cool detail that we didn't know up until now is that should your first shot on a wild animal not be immediately fatal your prey will actually try to escape and leave a trail of blood behind and of course since you're a hunter and you have that tracker vision you can pretty much follow it and see all of those footprints and they also make like visual impact in the game as well like for example in the snow and all of that and it looks that mercy killing is also possible in the game let's say the prey just runs away runs out of blood collapses and is still alive you can definitely do a mercy killing on it and that is a very nice little grim detail that I like about this game. The next screenshot perfectly exemplifies this and you can see a trail of blood leading to where the animal collapsed in the snow as well as the fact that Morgan is probably doing a mercy killing on what appears to be a deer. Also do note the high level of detail on the snow deformation and you can see all of the tracks themselves as well as like the mark that the animal leaves behind when it collapses in the snow. You can of course also see the blood trails as they make a visual impact impact on the snow itself. The third in-game screenshot is Morgan equipped with a bow and arrow, hunting deer in a forest and again it's mentioned that the choice of weapon will impact the quality of your yield. Bow and arrow seems to be the most optimal in these situations and you'll have to approach your prey quietly, cover your scent or stay downwind to make it harder for animals to detect your presence. Finally it shows another angle from the fishing minigame and here you can see see the fish itself as well as the type of bait being used. As it was mentioned in the previous section of this page, there are different variations of bait that players will be able to use. The final section is all about horses and I already made a video on that yesterday or a couple of days ago, you can go and check that one out as well, but we found a few more informations that I think are pretty valuable. So first of all, we now know that there are in fact a total of 19 breeds in the game all of them we already know have different stats and they are adapted to different types of environments. A few examples were given such as the Appaloosas, the Arabians, the Shires and the Mustangs. We do find another detail that I wanted to mention in the previous video but I didn't have official confirmation and it's basically the fact that we'll be able to fully capture and tame horses and there are quite a lot of species out in the wild. If you don't have enough money to buy a horse outright at the stables, you can just choose to capture them and tame them of course it will take a little bit of time to also level your bonding with them but i think it could also possibly be a quite lucrative way of earning money so if you can buy and sell or trade horses might as well start a collection and just hunt these wild horses tame them and then sell them at one of the stables you'll probably do a decent amount of money but once the game comes out i'll definitely test this hypothesis and see where it brings me you can perfectly see the stables in the following screenshot as well with Morgan leading the horse away from it probably after purchasing it or after storing it and as you know storing your horses somewhere or parking it will regenerate its stamina as well as its health. Consumables such as tonics can also be given to your companion and it gives temporary stamina and health boosts just like how it does to you. Other pieces of equipment that you can craft or buy will further increase the stats that the horse has, unlocking bonding perks 
perks and rewards is also mentioned, meaning that your horse is more important than ever and you'll want to take good care of it and not let it die. The next screenshot features Morgan on a beautiful chocolate and white horse with a nice rolled up alligator on the back and since it's a swampland, it makes me think that the hunting at the very least was done in that region and uh, yeah, alligators pretty much roam that particular section of the map. One thing that kind of caught my attention is the fact that this time around the alligator carcass isn't thrown right on the back on the horse and it's in fact rolled up nicely and pretty much tied up with a rope. So this kind of brings up the question, do you have this possibility later on into the game? Because this kind of looks as it would be better at preserving the animal corpses as well as not attracting that many scavengers to begin with. Finally we have another mountain view and Morgan carrying his recent kill. This is an even better view with the snow itself. Not only does it have advanced levels of deformation and reacting in real time to any movement, but it also realistically sticks to clothing. You can see it being stuck on Morgan's boots and pants on the back and you can even see it on the horse itself. Of course, trees also realistically have snow on them and it looks pretty damn good. And this covers the recent info as well as the screenshots themselves. The video was a little bit later than I wanted to because these informations always get posted when it's night time in my region. So yeah, if you're asking about that, this is the reason why I was late with this one. But I hope that all of this info was useful to you. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, a like and a subscribe would be super appreciated. Also comment down below if I missed anything and I will see you guys in the next one. So peace out.